Hello, and welcome to this lesson on using single pane or double pane windows for soundproofing. I've gotten this question before, either in the comments or students have reached out to me and asked me about this. And so today I wanna to demystify the difference between using just a regular single pane window in your home versus opting to spend a little bit more money and buying a double pane window. I'm gonna talk about what I would recommend doing for soundproofing and give you a little bit of the science and background behind why certain panes work better than others. Before we jump in, I have a resource for you that I think will help you along your journey of building a soundproof home recording studio. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It's 40 minutes of in-depth teaching, taking you on a journey to design and plan out your entire soundproof studio. And you'll walk away with an actual plan ready to go that you can then send to a CAD designer or somebody else. So if you're interested in signing up for that, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on single pane versus double pane windows. <laughs> All right, so let's start with single pane. So single pane has a couple other names, just so we're clear on this. It could also be called single glazed window or a single leaf window. Uh, all the same thing. This is just typical, uh, what I call float glass, which is a type of glass. And it's the cheapest glass, and it's gonna be the glass that's found in almost anyone's win uh, home, house, or apartment. And so this type of window is actually uh, really bad at soundproofing, as you can imagine, for those of you who hear lots of sounds coming through your windows. The reason is, is twofold. One, single pane doesn't offer enough mass. It doesn't usually offer enough isolation because the windows can open, so sound can come in through any air leaks in the window itself. And lastly, float glass is not the best type of glass for soundproofing. Uh, tempered and laminate glass are. And tempered and laminate glass are expensive, and most builders would never opt to put in a tempered or laminate glass window unless the owner wanted them to. So a typical float glass window will offer you an STC of around 25, which is really low, really bad. For those of you who don't know, STC is stands for sound transmission class, and it's a way that we can compare different assemblies, meaning walls, windows, doors, uh, to each other based on a unified system uh, that allows us to see how well they isolate. So STC of 25 is very low, considering most recording studios need an STC of 50 or higher to achieve an optimal environment for recording. So as I mentioned earlier, glass thickness will increase the ability of you to have better transmission loss, meaning better isolation and soundproofing. So in this graph from the Master Handbook of Acoustics, we can see a comparison of different glass thicknesses. So if you do have a single pane window, the thicker the glass, the better. So in this diagram, figure 18-1 from the Master Handbook of Acoustics, by F. Alton Everest and Ken C. Pullman. Uh, this graph shows that a one inch thick piece of glass will offer you the greatest amount of transmission loss across the entire frequency spectrum. If we look at the other end, the eighth inch thick piece of glass uh, has a significantly lower ability to uh, isolate sound from coming through. So we also notice that low frequencies are always the hardest thing to isolate. And at the one inch thick piece of float glass, uh, the transmission loss down in the lower range around 125 is close to 15 decibels, which is not great. And the eighth inch one has a maybe three decibel uh, loss. It won't even it won't even isolate at 125 hertz. So this is just a comparison, a graph to show you how thickness of the glass will greatly increase the isolation. However, the single pane still means that you're dealing with a window with an STC of 25, which is not great. Lastly, before we move on to the double pane window, I wanna say that if you get a window that is completely sealed and cannot open, meaning it's completely sealed with either caulk, acoustic caulk or neoprene, um, this window will give you an extra three to five decibels of transmission loss. So as soon as you get a window that can open and close, you're gonna sacrifice your soundproofing. So I just wanted to say that for those of you who do wanna have a window that can open and close. All right, so let's move on to double pane windows. So a double pane window also has the name of double glazed 
or a double leaf system, and it is superior to the single leaf system when it comes to soundproofing. The reason is that you have more glass and you have an air space between the glass, meaning you have more weight and more air, which is gonna increase your isolation. Now I will say that buying a readily available double pane window from a normal window supplier, meaning not a supplier who specializes in soundproof or acoustic windows, uh, will give you a better isolation than the single pane, but it's still not enough isolation to properly soundproof a recording studio. The STC, generally speaking, on a double leaf window that you buy from, say, Home Depot or your local big box home construction store is only going to be about an STC of 38. Again, remember that's better than the STC of 25 from the single pane window, but still not quite enough to reach that goal of STC of 50 or higher. Remember that in soundproofing, your room is only as soundproof as the weakest link. So if you have a wall system, let's say with a double wall system that is giving you an STC of 63, then having a window of STC of 38 means your whole room really only has an STC of 38, meaning your double wall system is kind of a waste. So you spent all that money on your wall only to have all the sound come through your window. All this said, I highly recommend if you have it in your budget to buy a commercial window that has been t lab tested and all these window companies will tell you what the STC rating is. So if you know you need a, a window that will match your walls at ST63, make sure to buy a commercially available window that has an STC rating of 63 or higher. I will say that in my studio, I built my own windows and uh, they work really well. I've been very happy with them. These windows cannot open, but if you want a link to how to build a soundproof window, I'll have that in the, the description below. So you can just check that out. It's another YouTube video that I put out on how to build soundproof windows from scratch. All right, lastly, I wanna show you another graph from the Master Handbook of Acoustics. This is figure 18-2, and let's take a look at that real quick. So in this graph, we can see that there are two different window types, and this is really comparing the difference between the thickness of glass and how you'll get increased isolation, especially in the low end. So on the bottom, we can see the STC of 38 is a window with a three, three and 30 seconds of an inch and a one eighth inch piece of glass and a three and three quarter inch uh, gap in the middle, which is still a pretty big gap for a commercially available window that you might buy at a uh, home improvement store. And you can notice that as soon as you get larger thicknesses of glass, so a half inch and a quarter inch pieces of glass with a four inch gap in the middle, you get an STC of 42. Still not amazing considering these are still uh, float glass. I believe if you were going to use tempered glass or laminate glass on this window, you would probably get an STC above 50 easily. So that's good to keep in mind since using float glass is never ideal. Another reason why I don't recommend just buying a readily available double pane window at your local store because it's not going to be made with the correct type of glass. However, we can see that increasing the weight of your glass will greatly enhance the transmission loss in the lower frequencies from about 500 hertz and below. So in conclusion, there are a few things I wanna just go over with you to kind of recap all that math and those graphs and everything we just talked about. First, I would not recommend using single pane glass at all for any sort of acoustic situation where you're trying to isolate using soundproofing methods. Second, double pane will definitely increase the isolation, but it's still not enough isolation for a professional recording studio environment. Therefore, it's best to buy commercial windows or use my method that I had that link for below to build your own commercial level soundproof windows that will provide enough isolation for your home recording studio. Remember that I mentioned that the type of glass makes a big difference. So using tempered or laminate glass is gonna be your best bet for getting the maximum amount of isolation. Float glass, which is the cheapest and used in most residential homes, is gonna be the worst type of glass that you can use short of plexiglass. Remember that the thickness of the glass will increase your isolation. So the thicker the glass, the better. It's also good to have two dissimilar thicknesses of glass, which I'll explain in a later video. But as you notice in all these examples, when we had the double pane window, they had different thicknesses of glass. 
Lastly, the distance between your glass will increase isolation. So the greater the distance between your two uh, pieces of glass, the greater your isolation. In a typical double wall system like I did in my studio, we're looking at almost nine inches between the two panes of glass, which will give you plenty of isolation for your recording studio. All right, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video on single pane versus double pane glass windows. I hope it's cleared up maybe some confusion you had and hopefully steered you away from using those windows altogether and buying either a commercially available window or building your own. This said, if you are on this journey, you can see it's very complicated. There's a lot of places you can go wrong and you can waste money. So I want to make sure that you don't go down that track. So check out my free soundproofing workshop. You can check that out at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, I'll see you all next week with some more soundproofing tips.